So let me start with that blood orange syrup cake. It's a good place to start. It's a single layer cake and it's brushed with this beautiful sweet blood orange syrup. But really what's interesting is the cake itself and the ingredients you use to achieve a moist tender texture but a cake that holds together very well. So I'm going to start out by measuring half a cup of butter into my pot. There we go. And I'll add to this a cup of milk. And I do want to bring the milk up to a full simmer. This cake is based on a classic Italian style recipe and cornmeal is the base ingredient. Now cornmeal is simply dried and ground corn. Sometimes it's coarse, sometimes it's fine. But with my heating the milk and adding it to it, you can use any grinder texture of the cornmeal, coarse or fine. I'll grab a whisk. And what this does is starts the absorption process and that is what's lending structure to the cake. So you really don't need wheat flour. You do want to whisk right away, but look at that. Look at that thicken up. Now when I was playing with this recipe, I learned the hard way. You can't add cold eggs to hot polenta. You end up with scrambled eggs. So to cool it down, I add my cup of sugar. And the warmth from the milk actually liquefies the sugar a little bit. Again, it's about building in moisture and structure at the same time. Those are the elements you have to keep an eye on when baking without wheat flour. Essentially, whenever you're baking gluten-free. I'll get my four eggs ready. And I'll just add these one at a time, whisking them in. The warm cornmeal has such a beautiful aroma to it. So it's a perfect opportunity to infuse some flavor, the zest from a blood orange. Blood oranges have a slightly more intense aroma and flavor to them. Now, blood oranges are seasonal. If you don't have access to them, you can use a regular navel orange. Now it's time for additional dry ingredients. And ground almonds is something you see in a lot of gluten-free baking, and it's because they do plump up, lending structure to your cake. So I'll add a cup to my bowl and two teaspoons of baking powder. Just a touch of salt. And then I like to add just a pinch of cinnamon. Now I combine this to incorporate the baking powder evenly and it gets added all at once to the wet mixture. You may find baking gluten-free that your cake batters are a lot more fluid than you might be accustomed to. And that is all about the absorption, allowing these ingredients to expand and then set. I am adding a syrup later, so just to catch any potential leaks, it's ready. My pan is just greased and I'll pour this in. So now the cake's ready for the oven. I've preheated it to 350, and it takes about 45 minutes to bake. You've got to give it time for that expansion and set. Oh, it smells so good. Now I'll check the doneness using my skewer right in the center of the cake. When it comes out clean, free of crumbs, the cake's done. So now I'm going to make a syrup with half a cup of blood orange juice and half a cup of sugar. And in the baking world, that's simply called a simple syrup, equal parts liquid to sugar. And I'll bring that up to a simmer 
Now using that skewer again, want to poke random holes within the cake. This allows the syrup to flow through. And simply pour it on top. And at this point, you want to let the cake cool completely within the pan. And once it has, then you've got your lovely dessert to serve. And it's time to show you how moist it is and that beautiful texture within it. A few segments. And look at how tender and delicate. No wheat flour required for this cake to be delicious.